you've landed on planet 412. I'll be your captain of sorts as we navigate this strange, cryptid-filled world. Join me on the quest for truth through the strange, mysterious, and supernatural. This is Planet 412. And welcome to Planet 412, finally, everybody. Uh, I apologize. Um, I, I have to be honest. I, it was the computer and the internet. It's my fault. I complain all the time about it. And I am sorry that it took so long. I had to redo all of the, the streams. So finally, we're here. So I just wanted to thank uh, the people as they pop back in. I hope everyone will come back. Um, thank you to uh, JC and, and Rye and Drew for being patient. Um, we're missing Susie. Um, hello, Tammy, Truth Walker, P. Jean. I'm glad you're here. Um, <laughs> Fisher of Spam. Um, I just wanted to, you know, just say, and there's our guest tonight. We have Susie Bastille. Thank you for being here. We got everything fixed finally. Uh, every, everybody's popping back in. Um, and, you know, I'm going to make it real quick with me. I will talk about what's going on with Planet 412 when we're done. So um, we have a new guest again, Susie Bastille. Susie, did you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I think everyone probably has seen me in the comments here before, generally on every week, watching and, um, you know, annoying JC. <laughs> It happens. It's so you want to tell us about what your channel is, the name of it, where people can find yeah, you. Give yourself some uh some cred. Gr grift, grift. <laughs> so I actually have a brand new podcast starting up called Paranormal Book Club. Um it started as a Facebook group and then spiraled out of control from there. So our first live stream will be May 12th and we'll be doing the Mothman prophecies by John Keel is our book for this month. Awesome. That sounds phenomenal. I can't wait to see it. Well, thank you for being a guest. You know, I was on with you and JC yesterday. JC did a, uh, a live stream on soft watchers, paranormal podcast about the eclipse. Missed you there, Drew. Um, you know, one thing I had to mention before I forget you guys were talking about pizza as I came in and you mentioned Detroit style pizza, which is my favorite on the planet. I never got to comment that to you guys. So I just wanted to throw that in there. It also but, it um, is absolutely my favorite style as well. There you go. Um, Sorry, did, did you guys miss me too, though? I know I know you missed Andrew, but did you miss me? No. <laughs> Ryan, and you, of course, are always missed if you're not there. So <laughs> you beat me to it. Don't be don't be cutting me off. I'm giving you a hard down. time. It's all about giving people a hard time and having fun. Yeah, and license fire fear. Maybe they were trying to hide the truth. There's quite often a lot of of problems. Hey, Tyler, I see Tyler's in there and Paul. Uh, thank you everybody for coming back. That was, you want to talk about anxiety? The the chest anxiety I have is like bigger than, than the planet. My wife was trying to call me down. So um, my wife, Stacy, thank you for keeping me calm and for moderating. And as always, Drew and JC and Rye and myself are moderating. So we'll just move JC. You had already started talking. Did you want to yeah. say hi and let people know what's up? Hey, everybody. I'm Detroit Pizza's number one favorite fan. Everyone. Hey, I fight you on that. I might be. <laughs> I did so good. It's like got the crispy edges and everything. But anyways, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, as always, we have our weekly uh, release that comes out as well as the far out folklore on Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I have a more lighthearted one coming up this week. And for anyone who did not see the the blackout blackout stream yesterday, I, I highly recommend at least scrolling through it and watching certain parts. There's some good some good snippets in there, some fun facts about eclipses and and then just like the last two and a half hours, they're just not banter between Susie and myself about every random topic you could think of. 
So <laughs> we had appearances. Drew, yeah, Drew popped in a few times, and then Matt was um in there at the end. I think like the last last twenty five minutes or twenty minutes. And I then you um, had the killer, uh, killer uh, Halo picture from my front yard. Too. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that's uh, if, you, if you follow any of us on Facebook, um, he posted it on there, so you can go and check that out. And Rye, you were there in our hearts and in our Why, minds <laughs> and on our mouths, but that's only when we weren't streaming. What? That is disturbing. <laughs> yeah. So. Anyways, yeah, Drew, you got you got anything you want to add to the Sasquatchers here? Thank you for being here. I wanted to say real quick before Drew comments, I'm glad you're here. I know you've been under the weather and not feeling well. You're muted, buddy. Um, so I just wanted to say, you know, we hope that you feel better. And as always, Jensen is in our prayers. But let us know what's up, bro. Uh, thank you for that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to be in and out of mute. Um, I didn't take any medicine yet for uh this evening uh so i might have to cough mute quite a bit hmm. um sasquatchers uh we have our our new episode that went up yesterday with shane grove uh he is from the um from the shadows podcast and we did his show too he's a cool guy he's from ohio we talked mountain heads and um we are finishing up the final touches on the paranormal game show that we talked about last week. And um, that's going to be a trivia turn-based piece and people will be competing for actual prizes and runner up prizes. And it's going to be a huge event. It's going to be something that no paranormal streamer has ever done. And that's kind of what we, want to continue to foster is the fun aspect of this and sure learning and investigating is is the 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 drive behind it but if it loses the fun you know i'm i i can have road rage and hate my neighbor without doing this so we have to keep the fun in what we're doing so i everybody keep your eyes peeled for that i think it would be really It'll be a good time for everyone who's into these streams to join us and mm -hmm. we'll hopefully have it that fine, like a final date on that very soon. Cool. And Rye, finally, would you like to say hello and let everybody know what's up with you and Codecas? Yeah, yeah. Hey, everyone. Raw here from Codegas Codex of Curiosities, a mouthful or maybe what, cabbages of cribbage of Canada? I don't know. W what oh. should we call it? Uh, Canadian cabbage are... conspiracies. Yes. Searching on my ideas here. I have this copyrighted. <laughs> um, so I definitely want to say, you know, uh, yeah, I I'm, I'm with Andrew, JC, Matt, and I'm sure Susie is in this as well. We're here to, you know, jump into these mysteries delve into these supernatural phenomena, you know, check out these conspiracies, but that's what we're here for. And it's fun. Like, you know, that's what we wanted. We want to bring this fun to you guys. Um, so what's new and upcoming with me, uh, you know, as usual, drop an episode on Thursday, I was going to be dropping a shorter episode. I talked about this last week. Um, cause I was like, Oh, I got some upcoming shorter episodes, you know, just small little things, but it, turns out that the guy that i was interviewing had a lot more to say and and i was like yeah no no this is going to go on to one of my regular episodes and it, it kind of ties in with slightly if you know um great is a great uh, cult classic called they live uh, kind of has a little tie-in with that not the rake side but the magic glasses which is really cool and and he showed me the glasses on the we shows it on on the on camera. So stay tuned for that, which is uh, really, really interesting. So there's that um, just uh -oh. regular enjoying join life and uh, dropping some interviews. What about you there, Matt? What's going on with you? Well, aside from finally the the extreme anxiety from what just occurred, I, you know what? I actually can't believe how fast I got us on Rumble, Pilled, and of course, most importantly, YouTube. That fast. That was so stressful. I didn't. I didn't think about that. I was thinking it was only YouTube you were doing, but no, you had to no. do them all. 
No, wow. I did all three in that amount of time or else it would have happened a lot faster. But, you know, I have people that want to watch from there. So, uh, again, we have uh, people on pill.net and rumble.com. Hello to all of you as well. Just to let you know, I am going to make sure in the coming week, whenever I do live streams, that we are not ignoring you guys in the chats on both Pilled and Rumble. I just haven't got Stacy and I together where we could get those dealt with as well as the live stream here. Uh, on Planet 412, um, as always, you know, we have our, our town hall session every Tuesday. Um, I am going to not quit other live streams, but I'm going back to a lot of the things that made me start the channel. So if you look at Planet 412 at the first, I'd say seven uh, videos, they are basically a format where you get me pre-recorded talking about a subject, say about the first one, my dog man experience. You get videos or pictures during the video, you get noise and sound. And, and I'm going to start making those again. I've had a ton, I'm talking hundreds of requests of me to get back on those original formats. People say they miss seeing me talk, my face. I'm going to keep doing the uh, the narrations. They're doing well. Um, I will keep doing, of course, our town hall session and occasional live streams, but I'm also going to go back to doing pre-recorded interviews and then release them as live chats once in a while. Um, I have Two other formats that are going to be brand new. One that I'm going to be releasing in the next week that I'm extremely excited about. And I will be having episodes once it starts where I'm going to need people, a group of, I don't know, maybe some four people that are, you know, might want to hang out with me and do something new. I don't know if maybe you guys know of four people that might want to do that once in a while. But, you know. I don't even I don't even know four people. <laughs> so aside from that, um, a lot you know happening. I have also anybody, uh, please for everybody here, uh, please go to their their uh, respective YouTube channel, Sauce Watchers Paranormal Podcast, Sodega's Codex of Curiosities. Uh, Susie's what you, you want the paranormal book club. That's the one you want to mention. And then for Planet 412, please subscribe, like, hit that notification bell. I also have memberships. And I would actually like if people instead of the memberships would start heading over to my Patreon. There's nobody joined up there. Uh, I, I would like to start, you know, focusing on Patreon too. I'm also going to be adding more formats uh, as well. Uh, audio version. So um, that's what's going on. But tonight, as everybody has noticed, you know, we had a gigantic response to our poll that we started last week about the subject for tonight. And one of them was the rake. And the rake didn't overwhelmingly win, but out of, I believe there was like 839 at the last time I checked people that voted on that that uh, poll, I think that's what it said, 839 or 589 or it's, I'll have to check it. Um, 35 to 38% of them said the rake or, or, or the, uh, the, the crawler. And uh, I know there's contention about them being two different things, but that's how we ran the poll for the rake. And then it was demons and uh, demons and shapeshifters were tied in second place. And a far third place was uh, the reptilian chupacabra. So um, the rake is number one. And since Andrew has not been here in a while, that is a subject that you guys are going to be doing a documentary on. I think we should let Drew start off. Cool. Okay, cool. Um... We can we can do that. Um, so I'm interested in having this conversation for a plethora of reasons. Okay, and then number one is because we are yeah, we're working on a documentary, and it's not yet kind of been figured out fully if it's a broad documentary about the phenomenon itself or kind of the local stuff that's been going on here out in my neck of the woods, which is where we've been investigating and 
um, whom we've spoken with are all from this local area. Now, the people in my area refer to this thing as a brush crawler. And Ooh. if you recall, um, some of you, I'm sure, watched a few weeks back when we kind of all brought something to the, the show that we discussed for a little bit. Uh, I had introduced you guys to a local paranormal group out in my area that filmed these phenomena in Pennsylvania. And so they actually do have videos of possible crawlers uh, on their on their uh, channel, which we'll show you tonight. Um, but the same thing with the last videos that we looked at. I don't take any claim to them or responsibility for them. And they could be really good hoaxes for all I know. I just know that they uh, they look pretty good. They're interesting and they fall on topic. So we could always watch them together and see what everybody thinks as a group, like we did the last one. Um, another reason that I'm really into this idea is because I'm working on a side project right now uh, with a, a, a co-associate at this point, I would say, that I was introduced to by Rai. And Rai has a lot of information on this subject as well, and he just had his episode launch not too long ago, right? Maybe a week or two. Yeah, it was about uh, two weeks ago, I think. It'll be two weeks on Thursday. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of knowledge from just about everybody uh, coming into this subject. So we should have a lot of fun. Uh, and there might be some some arguments that occur too. But uh, we'll see. It's a having a premonition about us fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well i think you're blinding me with your your dome and you should turn your light down because i i'm distracted by the glare on your forehead i appreciate that oh <laughs> they they just let everybody know these two have a loving uh hateful relationship on sometimes but i love the relationship these two guys have it's it's uh fun to see but they definitely are brothers from another mother. Um, Lice and Fire Fear had asked uh, Drew if maybe you could throw that pick up sooner than later. Uh, yeah, uh, if that's um, what we want to do. I wasn't sure if we wanted to get super into. Well, why don't we, before we pull this up, why don't we kind of like at least get into the what is a crawler? What is What do we think the crawler is? Uh, differences between a crawler and a rake. And while we're having that conversation, I can go ahead and get these videos, you know, ready to roll. Well, I, I, I know I was looking up things earlier about uh, hill crawlers and rake. You know, some people say that they fall into a category which could be under some people's explanation a wendigo or a skinwalker <laughs> um, a lot of people can can clump them together um when you deal with the rake first and foremost the rake is creepy pasta basically the rake mm -hmm. is just something that someone had created in a story to scare everybody and made that that uh creature up the pale crawler however uh, a lot of people believe that the rake kind of mutated from stories of these beings that have been seen for for quite a long time i mean we're we're talking hundreds of years going back to uh, you know indian native americans and in other countries of seeing these um, there's some great pictures. In fact, the most famous one, Rye, I know you have that one. Uh, it's it's one of the most haunting pictures I've ever seen is the one where it's on all fours coming at the at the trail cam. If anyone has that one, if you could pop it up. Um, you know, uh, again, just the difference isn't much other than one exists and one is thought to exist. Uh, the physical attributes of them are pretty much the same um, again and that's why i say one has mutated from the other you got the creepy pasta descriptions uh from what these pale crawlers are does anybody else want to add to that 
I'm going to add another, I'm going to add a complete spin in here and just muddy the waters even more by, nice. by asking the question, have you heard of a flesh gate? No. So flesh, so flesh gate is a similar creature to what we're speaking about. Um, but I've seen, I've seen it more described as a mix of a Wendigo, a skinwalker and a goat man. Um, but they're known so they're they are they are part of like this whole pale crawler slash walker uh genus this this family of cryptoids right uh but they're known for voice mimicking fast speed and excessive strength um so you know we'll just throw another one in there we're talking about the rake again um created as a creepy pasta uh and then the um the pale crawlers and then we can we'll add in the flesh gates as well there's now a we got three. couple of um native american we folk stories that are very similar to pale crawlers you have the Manig managishi from the cree tribe um that's what some people think the dover demon was uh, but it's the exact same description. And then there's the um, Mima Gawisi from the Ojibwa tribe. And every tribe has like different we folk or little people stories. But those two particular tribes, the physical descriptions are your typical pale crawler, um, but on the shorter side. So they're, they're many pale crawlers, essentially, and they're they're known to be tricksters. They hide in caves and in rapids and they'll tip over canoes as people are going by. That's, you know, the kind of mischief they get up to. Um, but very creepy. They're like stalker ish. They're known to kind of harass people. Interesting. That is extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, Matt, uh, know, Matt I, I've shared I shared a, a picture there if you want to pull that up as like the infamous sorry. pale pale crawler. Yeah, everybody knows this one right here, and um, you know and, it, and, it, and this. Yeah, and and this guest uh, that I had on, um, I, I she's working with uh, Andrew and JC. She did a deep dive, three year investigation into this photo um, to prove that it was real. Now. People will say, no, this is fake. And the reason why they're saying that this is fake um, is because this photo, if, if you can just uh, pop off that uh, that comment just for a second, uh, Matt, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, because this photo right here has this timestamp, okay? So a second photo was released with a different timestamp on it, okay? So how can you... How easy it is to debunk a photo if you have two photos with a different two different timestamps. You can easily claim they're fake. Um, now, when this was put through a detection, there was um, it was coming back as the photo was faked. The reason why the photo was coming back as being faked is because it has this stamp on it. This is the game camera of this person who who you know this was a company and this was their their logo. <clears throat> so this is what was setting off the detections that this photo was also fake. Uh, so this photo, when you remove that, that aspect of it, this photo cannot be proven to be a fake. There is no uh, Photoshop. There is no tomfoolery. There is nothing on it that has caused it to be, um, you know, altered. So that that's, uh, that is where I wanted to go with that. So sorry, you can put that, uh, that message back up there. I apologize for it. Very cool. No, don't apologize. That's all I right. actually have um, some further insight. One up later, and then we had one here uh, from from Eugene sixty three, who we had a little incident with a week ago, and I'm glad she's here. <laughs> um, I always wondered if they were related to ghouls <laughs> because people see them in cemeteries. A, a lot of cryptids are seen in cemeteries. You know, you hear stories about Bigfoot being seen in cemeteries, the ones you hear the most uh, in cemeteries and or Indian burial mounds are dogmen. Uh, and, uh, you know, ghouls 
I have also, uh, growing up, even as a child, remember hearing stories of phantoms or ghouls, you know, being in cemeteries. Anybody want to comment on that one? Yeah, uh, these things are very similar, if not exactly ghouls. Um, again, all we can really do until we have a body to investigate and explore is like, speculate. And I like the idea with the Skinwalker and the Wendigo comparisons as well. Uh, something that JC and I talk about many moons ago on our show <laughs> is mimics. And something that we always kind of like to bring back to the table is that conversation with mimics because we really can't say one way or another that these creatures aren't those things. And it, it could come into, you know, possible shape shifting and all other kinds of avenues as well. Or even think of it like a Pokemon, right? Where it's like has an evolutionary stage <laughs> and maybe this, you know, the rake uh, or the crawler is, you know, stage two before it gets, you know, uh, you know, a nice big set of horns or something on top of its head. Uh, so the ghoul thing is something that uh, I think everybody would agree on. And we are looking at that in our in our documentary as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For me, when people say ghoul, the only thing I can think of is my irradiated brethren in, in Fallout. So. <laughs> Hey, Susie, I just want to mention to you real quick. For a bit, I sent you a messenger message. I need something from you for the chat. Got it. I'll be on that. Thank the you. video, the video game comparison that you just uh, oh, yeah. made right there. So, actually, I have not yet fully investigated this lead yet, right? But that photograph that uh, you know, the famous one. Yep. Some of my research has shown that it is obviously a like you know a real photograph but credit for the photograph has been taken by the makers of the PlayStation game Resistance no. and they have a character in that game called the Grim and it it's basically mm -hmm. a crawler and there's no way to verify if they actually did that but Right after all of those news stories broke and all of the stuff that kind of started the craziness with it, they, you know, like within that day, they posted on Twitter about it belonging to them. And they said to keep your eyes out for the Grim. And that was just a, a new playable creature that was in that game, I think. I've never played it, and they could have just been jumping on a hot topic that was related mm. to their game but there's there's a large portion of people who are going to discredit it strictly based on that yeah and then I'll, it, I'll, they did it, it did end up in the game by the way i'll have to admit that I, I i haven't actually heard that so that's that that's news to me but very interesting you know and very interesting now what i was going to say as well is uh you know it's all also eerily similar to, and I always reference movies as well because I think movies have a a lot of play. You know, I, I think there's a lot of truth in plain sight. Um, the movie Descent. I don't know if anybody has seen that. I actually mm -hmm. haven't seen it, yeah, but I I, I, I um, know of it. You know, and and those creatures in there. Yeah, and and, oh. and those creatures in there look eerily similar to to like you know Pale Crawler or the Rake. Now, now here's here's the thought some people i actually think that there is a high possibility that this creature could exist in in reality if you look at let's say a group of humans for some reason for safety reasons moved into the cave systems and then they decided that the cave systems were a place of sanctuary and safety you know in my opinion that is where I would say adaptation would take us, you know, would take us to look like these pale crawlers, you know, all white. You look at, you know, cave uh, fishes, uh, fish in caves, you know, they lose all melanin, you know, they're all white. Um, and, and, and what do we have? You know, the pale crawler, they're very white. The skin is very taut. 
uh, it's it's very interesting. It's a very interesting thought to to uh, like you know a train of thought to go on as well. But and, and then you're talking about the Windigo. I you know I've been reading about the Windigo. And, you know, they call it the Windigo sickness, I think, or Windigo ill or fever. The Windigo fever Fever, is, yeah, yeah, when you're overtaken by this and you start eating people and eventually your skin becomes very tight, taut, you know, um, you, I think you're, you're, you become more whitish as well and frail and bony and yeah, very interesting. There's a lot of cultures that have stories of creepy things that live in caves you have the moon eyed people in Kentucky mm. and the kobolds in Germany. They're not, those aren't, they don't have the skinny lankiness as the pale crawlers do, but they have the, the pale skin and the big black eyes. I mean, you know, there's, and it's, it's so similar. Like there's stories in every region about creepy things living in the caves. Why don't you, uh, I'm going to jump to, um, sorry, I'm going to jump to Elkhorn, Wisconsin in 2022. If anyone's familiar with this story, it was the sighting, the intersection of Tell and Bray Road, right? Uh, and the creature that was seen there, now there are debates. Long, uh, okay, well, not that long because it happened in 2022, but there are debates on whether what that creature that was seen, um, at that time was was a crawler a flesh gate or was it the beast of bray road um well to andrew's point it could have evolved and... right which funny enough uh, drew i was uh i was sitting here and i was looking up the resistance lore on the wiki and those creatures in there that you were talking about actually have evolution they have different forms that they evolve through that's and interesting. Yeah, I've never played. No, it. I, so you're either you're either a really big fan of Resistance and you're <laughs> pretending that you're not, <laughs> no, or this just, was just another synchronicity moment. <laughs> yeah, no, we're we're plagued by synchronicities, and so I I take that. I I will look into that. This actually, the, all of these topics and, and the conversation around it has intrigued me to seek this game out. I mean, I don't game very often. Yeah, I'm, I literally just bought the first one on eBay right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, uh, I might have to. It, I, it was specifically Resistance 3 where they introduced this mm-hmm. Grim character. But uh, if everybody's ready, I have those videos pulled up. So yeah, whatever are, you guys want to roll. Did you see mine in the chat, Drew, in our, in our private chat? Uh, you, I will check. No, nah, I see one right here. I'll open that up too. Okay. Whenever you're ready, I will uh, throw that up there. Uh, Brian is giving us some. uh, I just realized my mic was muted. I was singing along, and JC, you started at the same time. I thought you're sing- we're almost singing along the same. I, was, we're almost singing I the really same was song. about. I was about to go into. Uh, I'm a scat man, but I didn't feel I'm like. I'm a scat man. Yeah. I didn't want to. I so, didn't want to take well, away all well, the attention away from this. Well, Andrew's getting the video ready, or is it ready, Andrew? No, it's not ready. My something's happening. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no problem. So I'll, I'll I'll take this up here. So like you know. I I I also like referencing always uh, movies as well, and you know Pan's Labyrinth, The Pale Man. I don't yeah. know if anybody remembers that one, where he yeah. had his 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 yeah. eyes were on his hands, but yeah. very similar to what the Pale Crawler or you know or the yeah the or the Rake kind of is depicted as. Now, now I always have a theory that we manifest creatures. We are able to create these creatures out of nothing. Well, not, I want to say nothing because I actually believe I, I know. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, you can keep talking. I have have a pause. No, 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 we got it. We got it. We got it ready to rock and roll. It's ironic. I just wanted to say you beat me to it. I swear to you, the next thing I said was going to be, you get large group of peoples on planet Earth that will actually manifest beings because yes. of the power of the brand. And there's been a lot of belief in that. Some can yes. say whatever, go pound sand. That's okay, bull but, but where's Santa Claus, then, guys? Huh? Yeah, that's there a fair go. point. 
Santa Claus comes around every December 25th, right? Now what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, every 20 December 25th, he's there. You what just mean? destroyed their lives. No, I, you know, and what I always say on my channel is it's up to all of you to decide if you want to believe or you don't. I just say there's possibly a possibility, but I agree with you there, Susie. All right, I just want my presence, that's all. Let's start this one. Okay, so this one is the one that JC sent me. So this yeah. one is actually new to me, not feel, part of the local. Feel free to skip through some of that. I, it's like a seven-minute video. Yeah, I actually put this in my in my interview, and I do it a little bit of. Oh. I, I I move it actually at a faster rate, and I kind of zoom in on the uh, on on this creature as well. There you go. I remember this is a very famous one. Yes. Okay. It yeah. can be seen up in that uh, the top right like, corner, if I recall. Yeah, it's like the middle-ish top right. I know, yeah. So can I? I'm gonna full screen it. Who calls? Who calls bullcrap? And who thinks it's legitimate? On um, this one, Drew, you want to mute that? I, I'm a little of the mind that this is staged. But there's always the possibility that it's real. True. It just has I, that it's, distinction it's of that being stage, far uh, back and blurry. Uh, what I do though, uh, put the playback speed to two times. It it, it, it kind of gives it more. Uh, so yeah, you can see it. You can see it kind of right where the table is, where the starting, chairs are. Right? You can start yeah. to see it starting. Yeah. Yeah, it starts to come up to the to the screen. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about chills. manifest, so we're, we're we we don't have to we can talk while this is happening. So manifestation, you know, uh, I've often I've always said that imagination is our strongest gift. Don't I, I don't mean like love or oh, love is our strongest. No, no, no. The gift that we have been given that is the strongest gift is imagination. Like, yeah, we all have love. Love is our strongest emotion. But the strongest gift we have is imagination, which is creation. Um, through it, we can create. And I believe there is so much more potential to our imagination than we really give credit to. Um, so I, I think it's really interesting. And I believe that we are able to manifest beings into creation. And Santa Claus, yeah, we actually manifested into creation because look how many people play Santa Claus. You know, it, it's not necessarily what exactly we think it is. Maybe it's something else, but, you know, mm -hmm. Billions of people play Santa Claus. It's true. So the, really the totality of this video, and I'm stuck on that word totality from yesterday. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the to, it's, it just kind of meanders in the background here. Yes. Um, off this guy's like patio porch or whatever you want to call this here. It's patio. Um, I think at one point it gets a little bit closer. I can't remember. It's like somewhere around. The, I, I the think middle. this is the closest it gets. So is it? he's talking on the phone with like a priest or a friend that's a priest or a pastor. Yeah. Out out like Latin or something like that. Yeah. See here, it comes a little bit closer here. Um, I think that's, but it's got some, it's got this jerky like movement to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again. And it's almost to me like, you guys said it looks a little bit staged, and I think that jerky movement to me is like somebody was really into Silent Hill. And if anyone familiar with that franchise of games yeah. and movies, the creatures and there were similar. The creatures in there always had the jerky movement, right? Because like it was creations of the mind. So again, going back, we're connecting a series now with what we were talking about. And again, um, which for anyone that didn't know, uh, the Silent Hill is is based off of um, uh, what's the town? Uh, Centralia, Pennsylvania, uh, where the underground was on fire. But anyways, it, yeah, to me, I don't know. Uh, it just seems it's one of those Ohio. videos that's like, what's that? I thought that was in Ohio. Hell, Ohio or something like that. It's Centralia, the in Pennsylvania, where the, the mines caught on fire. There isn't there also a place in Ohio, though, that that same thing occurred? They had to Probably. close a, a city down in Ohio. I know well, that's what they did with Centralia. They shut it. If you go there now, you don't even bother going there now. It's everything's gone, um, and people destroyed the roads and stuff. Well, I mean, they were destroying themselves, but people like just tagged, spray painted over everything, and there's not you can't see anything anymore. 
and you're going to get arrested if you go there now. <laughs> so just don't go. Uh, but I did go back to I went to Centralia when I was back in high school. I think my senior year we went out there, and there were still like two families that lived there that had refused to move. Hmm. But they're even even their houses are gone now. But anyways, that's way off topic. Um, <laughs> we we can talk about Centralia some other time. <laughs> Helltown USA is out by you though. Uh, yeah, Helltown. Yes, yes. Yeah. But that's that. Yeah, the mines aren't on fire there. That's just a weird place. Haunted, but there is a town in Ohio they talk where that like something uh underneath the ground also caught fire. That's not important. We had some people say no, let's yeah. and hey Joe Breezy just entered. Uh they want us to get to uh talking about the the subject at hand. So what I wanted to do real quick is um I had some things I had pulled up earlier on uh drew did you have other videos yeah i have two more pulled up that were from that local oh, place. yeah whenever yeah, you're well, ready we can show them and continue talking we don't have to yeah you know stop yeah. talking yeah so i just wanted again if anyone's uh <clears throat> confused pale crawlers are a phenomenon usually enigmatic entities that appear at night uh, they're humanoid creatures described as thin and pale with long limbs, claws, and large black eyes. They're, they're known to be incredibly fast, stealthy, and smart. Confirmed sightings, June 14th, 2008, near a forested area in Higgins Lake, Michigan, in which two mm -hmm. unnamed men were injured and one was killed. Police passed it off as a bear attack officially. The validity of the bear attack is unlikely as video that has since been lost, ironically, has been shown to have disproved the theory of a bear. July 23rd, 2013, in upstate New York near Niagara, a crawler was seen by a park ranger who would lose his job due to quote-unquote unruly conduct poor mental capability and an inability to distinguish reality from fiction. One of the few that spoke up and they got rid of them. We know how rangers refuse to talk about anything that happens. The crawler was caught on camera, but the, the ranger service confiscated it and put it under as official evidence, but has never since been found. And then finally, April 19, 2022, near Elkhorn, Wisconsin, JC, a uh, um, sighting of a possible crawl occurred on the intersection of Tell and Bray. Due to its location, it has been debated whether this was a crawler, flesh gate, or the beast of Bray Road. And there's other ones here. I'm going to read. I might as well read. There's two more. April 2nd, 1946. After returning home from Europe, Sergeant McKay of the 4th Infantry Division in the United States military claimed he saw an unimaginable creature that was pale with hollow eyes and that the eyes saw him and pierced him. Whether this was a crawler is open for interpretation as it happened so long ago. With Sergeant McKay's death in 2017, we may never know the truth. However, he remained adamant that mm -hmm. what he saw was 100% real and that it was, it was the cause of his severe PTSD. And then this is officially the last one they have listed. June 7, 1988, Theo and Marty Kronk and Alexis Grace in Independence, Missouri, were driving to their friend's house when they witnessed a large white creature that leaped over the guardrail of the bridge they were on and swung its hand at them. It also was seen in September of the same year by Dave Browning in Corning, Iowa, who was driving his semi-truck when he saw the creature crawling around outside the warehouse he worked at. So mm -hmm. I tend to lean towards rangers making comments which is so rare military police officers i find the validity coming from people of of those uh, uh you know they have high standards to to adhere to you know you you have someone that was in the military they were in the war um i'm gonna trust their eyes and and, and their opinions on things like that 
And Did a lot you, of them are older too. You have a lot of people that kind of write it off as, you know, this started from that creepy pasta and then people started faking it. But there's going back to what was one of those in the 40s that you just mentioned? Yeah, it was, uh, let's see, uh, 1946. Yeah, when I first heard like the creepy pasta stories, I said, that's the Dover Demon. They just came up with a name for it now. And there's another one that happened in Brazil in 96 that the the eyewitness sketch looks just like the Dover Demon. They're almost identical. So you have this before that creepy pasta internet phase started. And also in eras, when you go back to 1946, I think you were leaning towards this too, Susie, is you're dealing with older people who are coming from an era there's no way that you're going to get these people to come and lie. They're not going to lie about subjects such as this. They weren't brought up in a time of, of believing in things like that to begin with, much less going to, to you know, lie to the public about. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I agree. I agree. And uh, uh, sorry, go ahead, JC. You're going to say something. Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I have a, so I brought up a couple of videos of that, but yeah, so the, 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 the rakes, what we were saying, you know, like all these creatures, I, I definitely think that they are around and there's something that it can't be disregarded. You know, there's many accounts of them, you know, without being with like some of them without noses, without mouse, but some of them like the rake itself, from what I recall, has a huge, huge mouth kind of thing with, with rows of teeth. It was kind of the original description of it. But people have seen them with and without mouths. Um, you know, there there has been too many accounts to discredit this. And I know everybody's like, well, I don't believe in one. And that's OK. That That is OK. You can say you don't believe in it, but to discredit someone's story um who who has had these experiences is something uh, you know like when someone is coming out like like a uh, missy who i had on um and she's coming out and she's telling her story you can't say no nah, i don't believe in it well she saw something whether it's the rake that you want to believe in or whether it's a, a windigo or whether it's a pale crawler or you know or something else there was something that you know she saw and what it was you know, we, we have dubbed it, you know, the pale, she has dubbed it the pale crawler. And that's, that, that is, the, that's her prerogative. You know, like these creatures are, are, are from what I think, you know, and I think they're more closely related to ghouls. Like we were talking in earlier, you know, kind of like maybe a, maybe a, a, a scavenger of sorts, you know, like th that, that's a feel I get for them, not necessarily um attacking and and this is sorry for, for everyone who was looking before this is that video before that uh drew was sharing so it, it zoomed in a bit so you can see you have a little bit of a better view uh you can see it kind of moving around it's zoomed in i do have it speed uh sped up so you can kind of see it now is this a person in a in a in a suit you know i, I don't know but look like how it's holding its arm seems very unnatural. I, I don't know. What do you I guys agree. feel? So there's uh, that. I, I, and, and, and then I have Oliver. something else coming in right away. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying Tyler Oliger saying that he's heard that they're more active during the winter time. I don't know mm -hmm. if anybody has has heard of that. And then Lyson Firefear has a question. Um, I just audacious Amber. I didn't mean to do that, honey. Thank you um, for that comment. Uh, Lyson had asked that if somebody had any encounter with a pale, uh, a pale crawler, uh, please speak up. I obviously did not. I don't know if anybody else here has had any. Um, but if anyone in the chat has, please speak up. Of course, of course. And this here is um, what missy saw herself you know this is what she shared this is what she she saw you know it, it is humanoid it is very much humanoid but uh, is this it is human? the one i was talking about yesterday matt and jc she said it smelled like old spice right yes oh, yes okay. she, that actually so that's thank you for refreshing myself uh, i mean for refreshing my memory she had said that it has been said that these things, creatures, sometimes give off scents. And some hmm. scents are almost like 
like comforting, you know, to draw you in like old spice. You said, I think another one was like a blueberry blue pie. pie. Yep. But there was another one that the people said it smelled like death, like rotting flesh. So, you know, maybe it's some sort of pheromone that they activate. So this is, is, is something that she was, she was, you know, had drawn. And now here's another creature running across that. This is another video of, of another creature. Now, what is this creature coming across here? I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think of this? That looks like just a, a huge dog to me. Oh, whoa. Now that definitely looks like something else. Look at its movement from how it, yeah. Yeah. I know. It looks like That's a per, it almost looks like a person running on all fours, it, right? But there's, it's too big. Yes, I agree. Yeah, it's too big. Definitely like, not a dog. Yeah. No, that's the best view of that video I have ever seen in my life. Um, that looks to me like something like either a dog man or or a skinwalker, and that's how I would take it. They look like some a person having trouble with gravity to me. They they always <laughs> seem to be. Okay, look at this though. Look at these. Uh, yeah. Oh, that looks like a dog leg there. Yeah, I can put that. Walker -ish, I think now, obviously, you have dogmen. Yeah, I've heard hundreds of different accounts of, of where I find them interesting, not story like, more experience like, where some are, and you see how skinny that one is some ultra skinny, some very, you know, some are just human sized, some are gigantic, like what I saw. Um, I am going to say that's got to be either, you know, a skinwalker or I'm leaning towards maybe a crawler. Yeah. Now, just, just one second, Matt. So I, I think they, they'll change the colors here on this and you get a much better view. If I can pause it when they do this, when they change the, um, the contrast right here, I think it's coming up right here. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I missed it. But yeah, so you, you can actually get a, Really, really strange. Really strange. Yeah, and look at that. Looks like feet, like normal feet, but absolutely mm. crazy. What this is? That is, I, that I, is a, I absolutely that is a humanoid creature. That I don't. I'm not looking at that as a wolf man. That, yeah, this looks no, like yeah, no dog man in my opinion anymore. By the skinniness around its waist, you see its rib cage literally sticking out. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a skinwalker or pale pale crawler, boss. Or some sort of windigo, yes. And and there's something else coming up too after. There's an, what's that story? Go ahead. It's just gonna say or a windigo. Great job, right? And the yeah. windigo were known to go through phases. They had like different, to use the Pokemon term, evolutions. Like they weren't always in the the same form as well. It's not a phase, oh. mom. <laughs> That's a great video too. I've seen that. Some people mm -hmm. say it. Wait, I thought we were looking at the the what's this what's this other thing in here? Is that a cow? Uh, <laughs> it's a moose. It's a moose. It's a moose but in the <laughs> background, you'll see some type of thing. Seems yeah. like it's stalking it. Now I've heard go. fifty percent saying it's yeah. it's fake, and others have said that it's a legitimate video. Yeah, you can see right over there. It's creepy though. It is very creepy. What it, is this? Um, it, it, is, is it a it reflection again, looks in the like window? The, it looks like the Fresno crawler to me again, almost. Right? Hmm. Like, is there like a body? A fourth, though. And they're yeah. always seeing creeps. I've never seen one, like, straight up attack someone, but they're just always, like, very lurking and just creepy. A lot of encounters seem to happen on accident. Oh, bye, Rai. <laughs> he, 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 hit, he, he hit leave stream instead of just cancel share. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, here's a good one. That's one of the things that I, uh, I've been exploring is that these might may be interdimensional beings, interdimensional travelers that happen uh, oh, wait, just happen okay. to... Uh, to encounter someone and one of the reasons that i believe that is because multiple experiencers have said that the feeling of dread that they that they have when encountering these things is unlike anything else that they have ever had and uh the person who's local here that i've spoken with a lot we did an episode with him 
of Sasquatchers. You can go back and listen to it. It's incredible. Um, he basically said that his stomach felt like it was crawling out of his body. Like oh. he, there was just every molecule was telling him that something wasn't right. And there was just almost like an instinct that whatever had occurred was not supposed to occur. And mm -hmm. so when I took that information and had that conversation, I really dwelled on it. And it really made me think like that could be, you know, a human instinct letting you know that you are next to this thing that really shouldn't exist. And he was shook by this creature for a while, but was able to come out of that shell when he came to that same realization that he encountered this thing, but was likely never going to encounter it again because it just couldn't happen. And every person who has experienced these things that I've spoken with and have never spoken to each other have all said basically that same thing. Yeah that they have this just feeling of yep. dread that this should not be happening. Don't a lot of people like get obsessed with wanting to see it again and they go back to where they saw it. I've heard stories like that as well. I think yeah. that's case by case. Some people are very much intrigued by it and want to learn more like our, our mutual friend and the one that I know locally stopped going into the woods for a little bit like he was shook and wanted nothing to do with it and then once once that wore off he became a lot more interested in it again so yeah yeah it's like this it's a universe shattering thing that yeah. happens but i can't really find any that you know similar to a lot of these other cryptids and and things that we talk about i don't see a lot of encounters that really turn into violent assaults or attacks or people having to fight for their lives only when we're together i want to build yeah. on top of what you were i want to build on top of what you were saying and connect a couple things here have you guys heard the theory now obviously this is just it's kind of generic theory but the theory that so these creatures are coming as drew said from other dimensions and there are dimensions that exist that are exact copies of our dimension except for their hellish landscape nightmare versions of all of us upside so, down kind of yeah so let's so let's juxtapose that with cern all right we talked about cern a little bit yesterday but i'm not gonna get that was different so I when cern we'll supposedly when supposedly when cern is operating their hadron collider um uh it, it's opening up these portals and that and allowing these creatures to come in now I'm going to stop there because obviously this we have sightings prior to the Hadron Collider existing or even operating, right? Mm -hmm. But what if for a moment, and I'm going to go full circle here, what if during certain events, certain um, uh, astro, you know, astrological events, do certain events in history, mm -hmm. things that are causing mass deaths and dying off, what if that is enough to rip open these dimensions and that's what's allowing these creatures to come in they're just saying that they don't naturally exist in this world that they are coming from somewhere else entirely that would make perfect sense i mean you you look at what they what they've done and yvonne marshall yes i agree it's absolutely terrifying um and right i mean uh, dj tyler radio has been making comments um uh, he had a, on his experience where he heard uh, whistling in the woods and, and was wondering what they were. Uh, who knows? Maybe it was that. But back to CERN, JC, you know, that's something mm -hmm. I'd love to talk about as the main theme one day. You hear experiences of people that worked at CERN, some saying that they opened up uh, portals to dimensions. One said it, they, they thought it was hell, that some of the scientists had been pulled into these portals never to be seen again. Mm -hmm. Other people talking about that, you know, you, you look at, um, you know, one of the subjects that we had of you know uh, possibly when when they opened up cern and they started doing what they did 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 our uh realities get merged with others 
and you know you have situations like the Paris thing. There. And, and there's th th there's been a lot of things prior to CERN, though. You know, we got the um, and Ooh, if I talk mess about this my up, favorite Di one, Di Glock. Uh, if, if Di Glock. Di Glock. Yes. It's the it's the the Nazi bell. It is bell. my absolute favorite topic. How did I you know this. I was going to say that, Jason? I How knew it was coming? coming. I knew yeah. it. I, I was I was going to mention it myself, but you beat you started talking before me. I'm good I at was saying stuck. things before other people, right? When they're oh. getting where I had. Like, I was. So I steal. I steal that. Uh, but yeah, so it, it, yeah, it's the bell. So it's not only do we have like if we're talking about ripping holes in time and and dimensions, but let me just go back to CERN though, okay? If we're ripping holes into other dimensions, if we do it, I don't think it matters when we do it. I think it's going to affect all time. You know, yeah. you rip that hole, it, it you know, time is, is is maybe something that affects us. Maybe it doesn't affect these other creatures. Maybe it affects these other creatures differently. But of course, we got Diglock. Uh, we also have the Montauk. You know, when you're mm -hmm. talking ripping holes into um, into hell, you know, like the CERN. That's what they said was CERN. Uh, that was already happening in Montauk. You know, that's what Stranger Things is based yeah. on. It's based on the Montauk yeah. uh, project. Yeah. Ono actually wrote the Montauk project, and that's where that comes from. Christopher directed and wrote that and starred in it. And, uh, and people check that out. Christopher Garitano does an amazing mm -hmm. job with the Montauk Chronicles and, and also with Strange Days. And he has, uh, you know, uh, Off to the Witch. And then uh, he has a new one. Um, I have to, I'll bring it up later after I forget all of a sudden the, uh, what it is. But um yeah, right. He actually started that, and that's where they got a ton of information uh, for uh, Stranger Things is from Christopher Garitano's yeah. Montauk movie. Interesting, interesting. So, JC, why don't you pick us up though, where we're talking oh, about Daglock? Oh, oh. You hey, lead that. It sounds like it sounds like you well, want to, so you go ahead. I, I'm not going to go deep into it because that's not what this is about this episode. But we'll do we'll have to do a but, separate. But episode but it, but we're, yeah, but we're we're talking about where these creatures come from, right? And well, or, I wanna, I origin wanna, story. I want to recommend a book real quick for anyone that wants to learn more about the bell. It's called the SS the SS Brotherhood of the Bell by Joseph Farrell. Um. Pretty much it's going to give you all the information you need about the bell, catch you up on it. Uh, so the thing about the bell is it was, we don't really know what it was for. These plans by a Polish author um, that he had found documents that were related to these experiments that the Germans were doing with this bell shaped object. And it goes, you know, time travel, particle splitting, um, all, you know, all the way down to just atomic research, you know, which is still, <laughs> that's still a big deal you know a lot of the yeah. uh, operation paperclip people some of them supposedly worked on the bell now the bell went missing the, the area where the bell is at is still there like you can go you can see that there was well it might not still be there now but it was still there when they realized the bell was missing uh, along with the bell going missing i believe there was three uh german u-boats and some scientists that were working on the project all went missing. Mm. So, Antarctica. you know, what's the deal? Yeah, you know, where did they go? Yeah, did again, they, did yeah. the bell did the bell take them? Yeah, I don't know. In the future, back in time, do we have like future Nazis that we're gonna have to fight someday? They're uh, on the moon. They're already on the moon. <laughs> Nazis on the moon, right? Yeah. Well, things but, like that might be an explanation for like what John Keel called window areas or what i call thin spots like you have the bridgewater triangle near me the bennington triangle in vermont the ohio river valley yeah um just these areas of high strangeness that um, have river by been like that for i mean the bridgewater triangle it's been thousands of years it's been like that um but we don't know why it's like that but to, to Rai's point like if something did open up it would open up across all time Mm -hmm. So maybe mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, in the future that opened it up and we're, you know, trying to figure out in the past where it came from. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. The ripple yeah. theory. Yeah. So I, I'd love to talk about the bell. We can do an episode on it. Um, another good well, book. Why don't we do an episode on time travel? You know, well, I, I, yeah. I, I think we just do an episode on time. No, travel, well, be so careful because Drew's got, Drew's got a time travel, uh, 
theory and it's very in depth and it's cool well well planned it's and it's long uh but i want to just add to that like on top of not just the bell we know the nazis and even the soviet union were doing experiments on people right we, we, that's so we got a lot yeah. of we got a lot of our medical knowledge Maybe from nazi definitely people also, uh, experiments india, there was the talk of not to interrupt you jc in india there was the talk of the monkey man which possibly mm -hmm. also could have been part of a super soldier program in india. i was I was kind of going that direction, actually. So the Soviet Union was well known for trying to make super soldiers, you know, to the point where they were trying all kinds of like DNA experience experiments, excuse me, between people and apes and other creatures like that. What if these are let's 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 go away from the interdimensional pair, you know, well, still paranormal kind of. But what if these are just failed experiments? Could be. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, they just they just dump them, you know, like out in the wild, like, thinking, you know, oh, they'll die, they'll die that, on their own. That could really lend to like that almost shared mutual dread that occurs when, and it's just like a sadness, you know. This could just be a creature that was created and dumped, and that's mm -hmm. why everyone who encounters it has like that awful feeling, like they just left a puppy in the woods or something well terrible, humans but... used to do that to their own babies like the greeks if you had a baby that was born that wasn't you know fit to be whatever your idea was of the perfect baby at the time they used to leave him in the woods to die i think yeah. there's stories like that all over too. Throw them very, on you know, in, very common yeah. in China too when uh you know they, they had the the one baby um yeah. policy oh, yeah. which is now causing a uh population collapse um yeah. of China. Just wait for that hey, in 20 years. Drew, you know what you know what these kind of sound like, these fell experience kind of reminds me of the melon heads a little bit. Which, yeah, when you put we... it under that lens, it definitely shares some similarities. Are there any yeah. stories of like other things happening in the same areas, like UFO sightings in the same areas that you know of, or Bigfoot sightings, or anything so else? The ones that I have read, uh, no, and and with Missy as well, no. There's only been just that encounter. I know, like like with Bigfoot, you know, a lot of times we have heard, you know, orbs, UFOs. Uh, but uh, with this one, um, I have not heard of anything else, which maybe so strange to me. Yeah, which maybe lends the credence more of flesh and blood. Well, hey, uh, I want to. Oh, sorry, I just want to bring up somebody's comment here real quick um, in the chat. Any any dove said that her mom's best friend had worked at an asylum back in the day and took care of some kind of goat human creature that was hid away from view. Okay, I'm very interested in that. Yeah, I said that. I said yeah, we need, yeah. I want to know more about that. That's all she knows. Huh? But to uh, Susie's question real quick, in my area, in this, you know, this big stretch of Pennsylvania that I've been investigating, there actually are lots of other things going on. That's honestly, this is where I had my UFO sighting. It's just right over there. And then, of course, I was reading about some dogman encounters that somehow slipped right by me in 2018. And then right around on the other side of it, on the other side of the mountain into the Laurel Highlands, there's Bigfoot activity. So it, at least in the Pennsylvania area where I'm located, there are like a lot of other things that are occurring. But what I can say is this town is like the only place where this crawler has been seen. Whereas the other uh, cryptids and and creatures and UFO sightings and stuff kind of, um, have occurred elsewhere, and uh, it's just this center outside of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, this town called Boswell, for an, one summer basically, at, you know, uh, it a whole town of and it's a small town, but this whole town was affected by this thing. Yeah, Boswell, Roswell confirmed. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. Hey, uh, have you guys heard of Project Abigail? No, I have not. All right, so um, this is one of those ones that's it's it's a little bit out there, and a lot of it's been shared as like it tied into some of the creepy pasta stuff. But you can find more information if you dig for it so there was this experiment in 1945 and of course guess where it was happening 
area Roswell? 51 area 51 okay. right so um it was being that's when area 51 was known as the indian springs air force auxiliary camp is what they were calling it that was the name of it at the time so basically during the cold you know cold war 1945 soviet union was doing these experiments so we had uh, a doctor at this place called dr western who was trying to create a captain america basically um, nice. you know the super soldier strong robust wounds that could heal quickly and could withstand and, and his body could withstand uh extreme fatigue harsh conditions blah you know and the story goes on so what they did was they started experimenting on vagrants and prisoners so homeless people as you do as right? you do but absolutely right. yeah so um but what they realized is they needed healthy individuals because a lot of these people that they were bringing in for experiments were not healthy so uh there was a young you they found a university student a young girl named abigail uh and you can go ahead and guess who she was it was the doctor's daughter uh so they started experimenting on her right because that makes sense the doctor's gonna experiment on his own daughter right so they they did all these experiments and she ends up becoming this horrid looking um you know just botched human being that had like bones that had grown to abnormal shapes with like you know like tumors inside the bones and stuff um her skin had become pale and kind of stretched out from the the steroids that they had uh, been pumping her full of and um you know she just was all around emaciated and that because like they were just keeping her in this place so that's kind of like the the you know that starts to sound like a, a you know pale crawler or or similar and apparently they they continued these experiments on um college students during this time they would just pick they would just find college students usually like the loners people that didn't have friends they would pull them and experiment on them and then just kind of throw them you know out to the wild wow so you know it, it definitely you know it, it definitely has credence and especially with your melon heads too you know this this mm -hmm. kind of falls into that same category with these experiments and creating these things and then cannibalism as well you know comes in comes into play as well with this i don't know what do you guys think? Any other any other theories on that one, uh, Susie? Cannibalism seems popular lately, and that's mm. bothering me a bit now that you brought it up. Mm. But I mm. mean, it, it does. Um, they it, they do seem very similar to like their one phase of the Wendigo. Um, Chad Lewis wrote a really good book about them that goes into that in depth and. The description's the same, physical description, but they do seem to be like a something that's like partially manifested here or had trouble manifesting here or, you know, something happened to it. They, like they don't seem, they seem like they're coming, you know, maybe through the same places that other entities are, but they're not quite making it is mm -hmm. what it feels like. To me. There's just something not right about them. Yeah, can, I, I agree with you. Cannibalism seems to be coming up more and more uh, lately. And, you know, like, what is that uh, that movie about them surviving on the in the Alps, um, the rugby team? Um, Alive. No, Alive. yeah, but they, they just made us they just redid it and they brought it out again, which I was like, like, it, it was much better. It was way better done. But again, we're t like, you know, again, I'm always talking about like this uh, pop culture bringing in. Uh, I was like something about the the ministry of the snow or something like that. If anybody remembers that, uh, you know, type that out, but it's yeah. Alive. It was alive. This alive was the second remake. Actually, they remade it before. I mean, they did original, then they did a live and then they did another one as well. Um, but yeah, it's on Netflix. Lee Crisp uh, says on Netflix. Oh, look at that. Donations, donations, always awesome. Uh, also, guys, if, if you are watching and listening, make sure you hit that like button. It does wonders for our channels, please, okay? It does, guys. And, and Rye, since you brought that up, we have 71. We just had 72. That Well, 72 and 71 were my football numbers. 
71 was my number at Youngstown State University. 72 was my number at Youngstown Ursuline High School. But we have 72 in here, and we only have 57 likes. Please, guys, go over there real quick. It only takes one second. If you could get us up to all of the likes that there's people numbered into the chat, we would really appreciate that, guys. Now, PJ Gene brings up that uh, point. You know, technically, if it's not human and it eats humans, it's not cannibalism. True, unless they are humans, unless they are a... Or were break, humans. Or were. were. Yeah, maybe were. Break off species of humans. Um, I'm more into that camp. And again, my mind is always open to be changed. I'm more into the camp that these were a break off that moved into a dark cavernous region. Um, you know, the cave systems and survived and evolved. I don't want to say evolved because I, I, I would say adapted, adapted. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And the silence. <laughs> Sorry, I was no, 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 no. It's not like, no, I just stopped talking. But um, yeah, so that's my one thought because a lot of these creatures, and I, and I know it comes up though that there is some maybe woo that comes around with them. But for most part, I, I'm more in the camp that they're possibly a flesh and blood. Um, what about Bigfoot with mange? Very hard. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. That's a really excellent, uh, you know, comment there. That very well could be one. You know, Annie Dub just right as you said that. That's what made me think of it. Yeah, because they have been talking a lot of you have different sex. Mm -hmm. You know, X. I mean, I'm sorry, not X. The CTS, S E C T S. Um, and sorry to disappoint you, JC. Um, but you know, they have, you know, the 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 Gugwees and the others that definitely have killed human beings. You have the old stories going back to when uh Native Americans had to actually put down uh families of of Bigfoot that were constantly killing women and children and some men uh in in these uh these tribes, it's definitely possible. And I've never had anybody say a Bigfoot was mange. So that's a great possibility. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And, but the, the only thing I would say, and it's not that I'm doubting this, but it's a, it's just on the movements and how the pale crawlers move around, you know, they're more of kind of like ape, like on all fours. Whereas, but I guess there is the spider crawl. There is the spider crawl of, of Bigfoot as well. But for the most part, most uh, description of Bigfoot are bipedal walking on, on you know, walking upright, whereas the, the pale crawlers are crawling. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what to make of that crawling Bigfoot photo. Mm -hmm. Never been sure. Well, you I know don't what? think. He was actually a guest on Sasquatch Chronicles with, with Wes Germer. And him and his brother, their experience is they went up into uh, up into Oregon. I believe it was either Oregon or Washington. And they went deep into uh, the mountains and in the forest. And they actually had the experience where I believe it was four. And I'm trying to get him to come on. He told me if I ever have a channel, he would. So hopefully I can. But what had happened was they drove up there, him and his brother. And when they were leaving, they had kept noticing things. They were stopped and they noticed there were four different beings Two kept were behind the truck. They had weapons. And then all of a sudden they hit their brights and they noticed right in front of them was not one, but two uh, Bigfoot. And when they noticed the size difference. One was more along the lines of a big male alpha, all of the signs of the huge muscles and the big weight and everything. And then he noticed one much smaller, maybe half the size, very skinny, possibly breasts. And when the light hit that one, it dropped down immediately on all fours and did the spider crawl. So there's an experience of of having, you know, some Sasquatch that, you know, are starting out 
on on two legs dropping down he had also said the one that was extremely skinny uh did a hop literally at one point it spider crawled across the road when it was coming back the other way or went a different distance it had jumped on two legs almost the entire length of the road that was in front of them he said you probably could have driven i think he said it was larger than a two-lane road and just with one hop from one side to the other he said it was just incredible watching it do that so and he wow. talked about that horrifying fear of especially seeing that um that spider crawl just absolutely has had haunted him for for decades so uh, again i'm going to try and get him on and have him tell it but it was really a cool uh thing to hear somebody that saw that firsthand everybody still here <laughs> andrew andrew is <laughs> looking right uh I've been yeah. muted because my cough has gotten significantly worse, but um, I have been paying close attention and trying to moderate a little bit. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, my thank you to my wife, Stacy. Uh, she went to bed. She's a, a substitute as well as a dance and baton teacher. So she said uh, goodbye to everybody. Um, and Lyson Fire Fear, I will interview that eyewitness. Uh, his name is Drew Germer. He is actually the person who owns and runs and interviews people for Sasquatch Chronicles, one of the biggest uh, podcasts out there. Um, so uh, it's an excellent story, and he does a great job there. And I will get him on. As well Eve as Aaron, Turner, they owe me. Yeah, Eve Aaron in the comments said that they've they've heard of crawlers describe a transparent skin which now leads me into another cryptid called the glimmer man uh if anyone's familiar or heard about the glimmer man so the glimmer man is supposedly a oh a, a, a see-through cryptid right like it's an opaque uh transparent cryptid that's usually a large man um a large thin man that seems to phase in and out of reality uh, and I've seen some of these videos of w Wendigo's pale crawlers and that, where it almost seems like some of them come and go. And yeah, we're not talking about the movie Glimmer Man <laughs> either. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what do you guys. So a another another one of these cryptids maybe that we can lump in here um, with this. And I was trying to find a good video of a glimmer man and it just keeps taking me back to this did did we have you guys ever seen the 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 rake video from i don't know it's somewhere in latin america but it's like in this pipe it's in like this water runoff pipe no oh was um, it here, the, one that the one guy goes down and the light hits it and it like does it's almost pig scream or something no this is this thing just like pops out of the pipe real quick and back in and you see it for like a split second it almost looks metallic in like as far as that goes here i'm gonna I'll put it in our chat here and somebody rye if you're on the sure. you got the trigger finger there already i got it bring that up real quick it's just it's real quick this thing like right at the end of the video like at around the um like 11 second mark this thing pops out real quick and back into this pipe but it's the strangest looking it just i don't know <laughs> all right matt i got it ready to rock <clears throat> load okay, it okay it's at the bottom hold on one second so, because there's so many windows up on my screen, I need to go down for it to pop up. No problem. All right, here we go, right? Let me uh, make this big and... Oh, I hear thunder. Uh-oh. <laughs> we have it here too, JC. So it's right there and gone. So they slow it down here. And they're going to zoom in. But it just... it. It's, it's got a hand. It's got a hand around the side. Oh, like I didn't it, even it, notice. That. It, it grasps. It grasps. Uh, oh, the pipe. yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that looks almost like an alien. 
I don't it know almost just because it it's looks... not there in the beginning. It's not there. It, the hand is not there in the beginning. It reaches out first. Yeah, and so yeah, apparently this like... also this this terrorizes the whole town. This this village. Um, can we slow the speed I, down on this one? Of course, I can. Had, the village had kept seeing this creature that was kind of like this that was being reported, um, and people thought it was kids pr playing pranks, and that. It almost does look mantis-like, Tammy. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So the hand just went on there. Yeah, the hand just went on, and it sticks its head out. Now the hand is already there. Any dove, I agree. That that comes off to me very alien. Mantis. Like, very mantis. Alien? It does look mantis-like as well. It has that extended long head. You get, you know, a lot of stories of insectoid type uh aliens uh, or beings. Uh you know. Wow, so if you if you crazy. go back to the beginning of the video, you can put this kind of into size comparison too. Like this is a water runoff pipe at a plant. This isn't a tiny pipe coming out of the ground. You know, this is a. You know, you could crawl into that. Yeah. So you know, this isn't just like a bug popping its head out of like a tiny water pipe somewhere. I don't it's so it's so weird and I can't find anything else on it. Like after this video, it's just like there's no information. Like I couldn't even find um any further reports like what they found out in the town and that this was just it. And this was featured on the news. Jeez. How thin the neck is as well when it looks around. The neck is super thin. Mm -hmm. And do you guys remember also the really famous video of uh, I think they have, they, I don't think, I know they do. They have kind of like a remote control sewer checker, doing a sewer checker kind of uh, remote control thing that has a camera and looks at the sewer. And it's going forward in some type of insectoid, almost like being or something, looks around the corner and then kind of goes back, comes out again. And then when it starts to move closer to it, it jets, it takes off. Do you guys know of the video I'm talking about? I feel like uh, I yep. feel like I've seen and it. I, I, I'll get it ready. So you guys Brian can go knows and what I mean. Yeah, that one is one of the best, in my opinion, uh, of something that definitely, it looks very real to me. Now, obviously, the Now, is, is this so. it here? Let me, uh, is, is this what we're looking at here? Hold on, let's see. And Lyson, I'm gonna we're gonna try and get it up. I think it is Rye. I'm almost yeah, this is it. Okay. Like there the it is. is. <clears throat> and it stops for a second because whoever's driving it saw the eyes. Ugh. Now that, that looks mantis like. <laughs> That's it's it's another Fresno crawler. <laughs> look, 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 look. Ugh. It's got four legs. And see how fast that thing jetted? The yeah. speed yeah. of the when that thing, please rewind that. The speed of when that thing takes off is absolutely mind blowing. It is just like wow, gone in the blink of an eye. Okay, here we go. So I've slowed the speed down. So it's I mean, you get a great look at all its limbs, and I mean that thing. I think it even has a tail, possibly too. But I mean, the speed. I wow. mean, you slowed that down, and the speed is just absolutely incredible. Um, but yeah, if you could rewind it, even when the eyes start popping, you know, when it's uh, doing the tree pop or tree uh, peak, actually. I mean, look at its height. It's hard to say the height, you know, like, are these 10 inch blocks? Yeah, well, you're right. You're right. I give you that. I would say that this is probably five foot. You could probably five foot walking, maybe four foot. Uh, you're right. There. You never know in, in a sewer how tall it is. Yeah. But it's definitely got its head to the ceiling. Yeah. Well, it's it's bent all over, so it's crouched. So, you know, you we're not getting a full height, in my opinion. Right, well. right. Now... 
Let, let's see if the water gets disturbed. That's something I want to see. You know, is, is this legitimately disturbing the water as well? I don't know. I do see a reflection, though. I do see a bit of I a reflection. Too. Yeah, I do, too. I don't it's know. It's hard to tell, but you definitely did see a reflection, and that mm -hmm. would be difficult. It does look like there's water disturbance at the end of the it tunnel. Does. Yeah. That's one of my favorites uh, of, of videos that look legitimate to me. Um, I mean, and that also going back to what um, Tammy, uh, uh, I think it's her new one is Truth Seeker. I believe that's her, her new. Yeah, animal. Truth Seeker. ND um, South she, she made a Dirty point Bridget. of saying that, you know, that one we were just looking at looked uh you know, mantis-like. Uh, that one really looks mantis-like. Very lank, mm -hmm. lanky, uh, long arms that are extremely mm -hmm. skinny. Uh, man, I, I mean, that's just crazy. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. And they were both Speaking in the same kind life. of environment, too. You have a tunnel and water, like caves and streams and cavernous mm -hmm. areas with water seem to be where they show up a lot. You're right. You're right. Reminds me a little bit of the fluke man from the X Files, the sewer monster, if anyone remembers. Oh, yes. Yes. I think there's stories of rake like creatures in the catacombs in Paris, too. Yeah. There. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't. It's, I guess we're glad that that was a robot, though, down there, right? Not a person. Yeah, for sure. I would not want to be the guy. <laughs> <laughs> down there in the boot in the rubber boots uh you know doing that actually right yeah yeah no thank you uh lice and fire fear it actually uh said that she thought of it maybe as a lizard man there is another uh maybe you know of it right there's another tunnel video of something running all the way across an opening and there's a long tail at the end of it jc you're saying yeah i've seen it yeah, yeah. um it had so quick it's it's a, it's a tunnel video just similar to this one and it almost looks like a, a velociraptor a, yeah kind of like a velociraptor yeah. it goes across the they look more amphibious than reptilian to me like some I, of them kind of look they, like frogs like lanky agree. frogs uh, see, I'll see if I can find that, or or, or uh, do you want to see if you can find that, JC? Yeah, give me one second here. I just, I literally just had it up on the screen. Um, okay, anybody? Uh, uh, we, and we have right now. Uh, I think this people is have left. There's 68 people, uh, and thank you. We got so, up, I think, to 78 or something tonight, but we only have. Oh, wow. We're up to 73 uh, likes. Nice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. That is awesome. You guys asked. I mean, we asked and you did I from all of us. Thank you very much. That's phenomenal. See, all that's, right, so. that's how you work together. Thank you. Here, here we go. I'm going to be presenting another one here. Okay. Okay. Let me know when it's up so I because I'm uh, on the other screen. Right, I'm popping it. Here we go. I got it playing back a little bit slower as well, so we can see it a little bit. Uh... Yeah, this is it. Yep. See it hops. That's the better. View. That's the best view I think I've ever seen of that video. That looks like the alien, like from Alien. Yeah, right. It kind of does. Yeah. It's, it's very, very xenomorphish. You yes. know, it makes me wonder if it's actually the creature that we had just seen in the last video, too. Crazy. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Uh, would you mind playing that a few times more, Ron? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, no, hold on, hold on. It's coming, it's coming. Uh, sorry, buddy. No, no, no worries, no worries. Let's do this here again. Okay, I'm like going to whatever video we pop up. I want to make a habit of like doing it maybe like five times so everybody gets a good uh, look at it. Okay, I'll I'll let it go. I'll let it slide just this once. Uh, <laughs> sure. 
here we go. Uh, let me know when you're sharing so I can hit play. All right, one sec. I slowed the playback speed as well. Rainier Street. So does anybody know where Rainier Street is? And this being English, it would have to be someplace, you know, either that speaks English, you know, because U shaped with flat top, whatever that means. So this is all typing in English. So it has to be predominantly English in this uh, location. And with these Correct. blocks like this, I would say you're looking maybe in uh, the UK. That's There's a Rainer guess. Street in Manchester, England. There Thank we go. You. Oh. Busy. Busy tearing it up. Ba -boom. Are we on? Uh, sorry, can I start it now? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Okay, I was waiting for you to give me the the. Okay, okay. Here we go. So I got it playing down a little, playing a little bit slower. Hmm. Wow, and it does remind you a little of the alien from Aliens. Uh, that mm -hmm. that you want to talk about? Now, what is this thing? Like, what what is this device that they're using here? That's as actually, well. they use that in sewers. So if you have a pipe that may have a problem or something, that can go inside of it and it has a little tool you can see on the end of it and like a little like claw. And you can put that inside of maybe clogged pipes. Um, and usually they also have a camera on the end of it. So when you stick it in, you can see what that problem is causing, what it is, what the, what the clog is. That and I know that because my uncle used to be in, and uh, he worked for the Youngstown Water Department back in the day. It turns out yeah. Matt just really likes plumbing. <laughs> no, actually, I prefer to stay away, but I would go down there with a group of people well armed to find something like that. I mean, I just don't, uh, if I'm going underground, like I'm in fighting mode, right? Like, there's no reason for me to be underground. And there's not good things underground. I've never seen a video, even if there's no creatures, like things collapse, mines catch fire. Like I'm not, <laughs> it's not a good place to be. I, I agree with you. Yeah. That, I do having agree. worked underground, I can yeah, say yeah. that yeah. it is not the best place for your mushroom headspace mines. either. I was, I was there for so four hours and I quit. And never why, did back. You, why did you work underground? I worked at this, uh, it was a mushroom farm in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. It was the only underground mushroom farm in America. I guess that's more of a popular way to do it over around India and Asia, but it was only ever done in the States the one time. And uh, they took an old salt mine and they converted it into a mushroom farm. So technically I was mining. I was hundreds and hundreds of feet below the earth's surface there were caverns there were underground lakes and cool. I, out of the corner of your eye you would see things every time you were down there it was sure. it was a trippy yeah. trippy place and uh if you were in a bad headspace it would mess with us uh if you want you had any bit of depression or a bad mood and you were under there it was amplified it was a strange, it was a strange environment. And I'm, I'm thankful that I was in that environment and got to experience it. Uh, but at the same time, it was probably the one of the worst periods of my life too. And it was it's <laughs> absolutely. Interesting that it was, that. You said it was a salt mine. Right? Yeah, I believe it was uh, maybe. Was now, it a slate? Slate. slate. Yeah. It's, it's slate. been okay. over 15 years at this point. My brain's a little mushy but i actually had found some information about the place in all of my old files and stuff you know a couple of months ago and just the area where i grew up my entire family worked at this thing so mm -hmm. <laughs> like literally uncles cousins yeah uh, every single relative that i had in the area it was just like the family trade well, oh, oh, we're gonna go work in the mines <laughs> and yeah it was it was very difficult to remain positive underneath the surface like that every day. I can't imagine. I'm sure it wasn't. This is interesting. Wow. I, I actually, I actually, I think it'd be interesting to, to at least attempt it or try it for a little bit. And then, you know, just to see it, you know, to have that experience. Well, one thing that was cool about it was it wasn't coal mining. So 
uh, it wasn't quite as dangerous. Like we weren't digging the earth anymore once we were under there. So uh, the it it wasn't like real tight because I I trained for that too, and that was that's a completely different animal. But what we got to experience was a legitimate large gigantic caverns where it was very comfortable. Once you were under there, there was no crouching. It was walking upright. There was an area that they had set aside and built into that was like a break room and stuff. So it was very opposite of the cramped coal mining. But yeah, man, it, people would get lost. It was, it was really, like, yeah, people, mm -hmm. people got lost down there. We were told that people had drowned in the, in the lake that was under there. Uh, so yeah, but not to get, there's on no way. recovery. There's no recovery. <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't, I don't put it past. I mean, think about it. You get a bunch of teenagers and stuff working because that's a, a majority of it was like teenagers working down there, and you get people doing stupid stuff, right? Like, hey, these got a group of teens that wants to run off and jump in one of those underground lakes. You know, they they get one of those and drown. You know, that's not not too hard to believe. Yeah, or just I, even get just even getting lost in those mines, like how. Uh, down there you know even people that know their way around down there you wander off in the wrong direction you're in the dark aside from your headlamp good luck everything looks the same <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah about 20 minutes from me there's a place called old newgate prison and they it was actually also it was a prison like pre-colonial and it had a copper mine so they would make the prisoners mine the copper but once they got to a certain point they actually had like isolation cells down there too. And you can go see like there's eye bolts drilled in um, notoriously haunted. Of course I did not experience anything, but yeah, real creepy place regardless. And like, just to, you know, have to dig your own cell. Horrible. Yeah. Yes. I, uh, I actually, when I was living in Chihuahua, I lived near the Nazca mine. Uh, not Nazca. Sorry, I call it the Nazca mine. It's not the Nazca. Not the Nazca lines. Um, the Crystal Caverns. Uh, if you ever heard of the Crystal Caverns in Mexico, the, I wanted to go, but it was I couldn't go. Uh, Discovery Channel actually filmed an episode of Dirty Jobs over at the mine that I worked at. Really? So, oh, that's really? something uh, that they did. That's right. They did. Yeah. You, you can you can seek that out to take a look at at what we were doing. You, you see uh, Drew swimming in one of those <laughs> underground lakes in the background. <laughs> I'm one of those d bags that would end up getting lost, not because I was doing anything I shouldn't have been doing, but I I have a terrible sense of direction when I'm above the ground. Uh, I got lost a few times, but it wasn't that bad where you know it interrupted everybody's work day to come find us and turned into an emergency with alarms going off and stuff uh, <laughs> but Crazy. yeah yeah joe breezy mammoth cave it's considered one of the biggest mm. entry points to enter earth i have oh. heard of mammoth cave before that's yes. actually a good little trivia uh yeah, uh, part there to bring up there, Joe. Thank you, brother. It's in Kentucky, right? That's where the moon, the moon-eyed people live. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that, and they're probably from underground. <laughs> they are. They live in Mammoth Cave. Yeah. Yeah. Well, full that, circle. Exactly. Exactly. Full circle. Let's see. Um, Yvonne brings up something here. Those huge crystals, quartz. In those caves, the scientists got very emotional crying. I mean, you know what? I you hear, you know, people who sell specific kinds of stones or mm -hmm. crystals, and they say that they have different effects on people from healing to emotional to making you feel better. I don't know about the validity of all of them, but I think the mind is such a powerful thing that if you believe that possibly one of these crystals does help you health-wise or just you know, emotionally speaking, maybe it would. But I mean, if you're in a cave and we've all, I'm sure, seen some of those absolutely unbelievable caves that people go into that are that are just 
like in the movie, uh, what they were in that one machine that went to the center of the earth to restart it with the uh, comic journey to the center of the earth. (laughs) They had the one, the newer one, they went into a a machine and they lit off a numerous amount of nuclear bombs to restart the, the center of the earth core. Because it was, it was, uh, it had stopped for some reason. And they were inside of these giant caves with crystals. Now, I've seen real pictures of the crystals, you know, the crystal caves all over the internet. They're so amazing. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe if you're surrounded by those types of things, it causes that to happen. Matt, do you want to pop up uh, my, yeah. my share there? This is, this is the, this is where I lived near um, when I was in Chihuahua, Mexico. Yeah, hold on one sec. I believe the movie you were thinking of is called The Core, starring yeah. Anne Eckhart. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Drew. Good job, bro. Yeah. So, so these these are. This is where I lived near. Was this uh, location the here? That's the picture I was referring to that you just took down. This with one the guys. Here? Yes, that one right there. I mean, can you imagine how amazing that would be? Or if those were diamonds, and you just were like, okay, snatch. In my mm-hmm. pocket, in my bag. These are silicone-based uh, crystals. Uh, they are um, selenium, I believe. Selenium is what it is. Selenium, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Yvonne, actually, all things on the planet Earth, either living or non-living, have uh, sound frequency vibration. Every mm-hmm. single thing on the mm-hmm. planet Earth does. And yes, uh, Tesla did experiment with crystals to see if they did have some uh, effects on different things like living and non-living things. And, you know, JC perked up when I mentioned Nikola Tesla. We are definitely going to have a, a, a town session where, you know, town hall session that we talk about Tesla. And then I, I think we should bring up uh, Einstein as well because you know I'm I'm in the boat that he's a he's a fraud. Oh really? For Einstein? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, oh. I believe he 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 copied a lot of people's work, and he was like pushed into take credit, and he it wasn't. That's why he never did any live debates because he wasn't as smart as he claimed to be. Wow. And my, uh, Mr. Mr. Hunt, I'm not going to say his full name. Uh, <laughs> Selenite. Yes. That's Selenite. Yeah. That's Susie's eyes closed. I agree with you, Susie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No, th- th- no, this has been great. One, yeah. I do remember no one, one guy got his head stuck in and they, they had no way to get him out. He was upside down. Could you imagine? That was a mammoth cave, I think. And that yeah. was, like you know victorian times and they like made a sideshow of it and had like refreshments and people coming as like tourists well that actually happened as well in this here and now where they had a a person could you imagine the absolute horror i would like be like somebody shoot me please if i'm gonna be stuck and there's no matt i'm sorry bro you're not going to do Put me out. Take me down. I want done. I Could you imagine how somebody, they would have to sedate you? Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Joe Breezy makes a, I, I lost it for a second here. Well, let's see. Einstein stated Nikola Tesla was the greatest inventor. I'm going to have to uh, agree. I think he was too. I think, I, I think he was from another time. If you one, my Nic- honest Nikola he Tesla. Venus. Yeah, I was just about to say that Nikola Tesla claimed to be from Venus. Yeah, Nikola, I he, he was something else. Nikolai Tesla was part of a group of time traveling socialists with Charlie Chaplin, Albert oh, Einstein, and Helen Keller. And whenever you guys are ready to go down that rabbit hole, I'll be <laughs> happy to learn you on that. I so, I will one hundred percent tear Helen Keller apart for an hour. I've yeah. done it before, and I will do it again. So she wasn't killed by coconut crabs. She she went back to her time. 
I think you're fraud. confusing her with fraud. Amelia Earhart, but I think yeah. either way. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you for straightening that out. Yeah. Hey, if I'm wrong, I want to correct it. Also a horrific way to die. Um, yes, but Helen Keller was a fraud. Okay. And and, and you, you, I've heard that before, too. That's interesting. Probably was from yeah, me. No, so I've heard that as well. <laughs> Probably, actually. I'm not going to get into it tonight. I get very animated about Helen Keller and her fraudulent existence. Okay. Well, we uh, we will definitely, if everybody would let us know, would you like us, instead of doing a poll for the next uh, uh, town hall session, would you, those of you, 68 of you left, which is a great, oh, and Tyler, thank you, brother. Thank you, DJ Tyler. Tyler uh, Oliger right, and you. his girlfriend, Sam, uh, were uh, guests on my live stream this past Saturday. Please mm -hmm. check that out. Uh, it, it was a great two-hour interview with the two of them. He had a, a, some amazing experiences, as well as Sam Phillips did as well. Um, thank you, Tyler. And what I was just going to ask, instead of us doing a poll for the next uh, town hall session unless we you want us to do another poll we will i mean my god uh, well, I, I i think we should but i think we should end it instead of leaving it right to the last day i think we should end it like on like friday or saturday because then it gives us a little bit of time to uh prepare for it kind of thing okay. um and then i also want to say you know and 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 chris uh you know, I, I, I think I'm going to have Hibbler back on because I can see their comment there. Um, I, I definitely want to have Hibbler back on and hear what he's got to say uh, now as well. And, you know, so what I wanted to say is, and thank you, Yvonne, and Tyler, thanks again, brother. Uh, Yvonne saying that we have had a great guest. Uh, I believe everybody is. And, you know, Susie Bastille, this is not the last time. I would like you to be a regular with us if you'd like to come more often, for sure. Um, I would like to have her. And um, so if you guys would like us for the next poll uh, to throw in the, and we'll keep them as one choice, we'll say uh, Nikola Tesla and Einstein for the next poll. Uh, you know, part of the poll, and there will be three more. I can only do four. It lets me do four choices. You guys want to throw? Drew, do you want time three? travelers? I would like time travelers. Okay. I for Drew. I, time time traveler in general is is just amazing, amazing. Okay. Drew, Drew. Oh down. shit, right. guys! I gotta go. I gotta go. Okay, I'll talk to you guys right. later. Right. Something Thanks just happened. Anybody. Thank okay, bye. you. Bye. No, oh, geez. What? Did you guys hear an explosion <laughs> on his I end? No, I hope everything is okay. Drew, you're muted, by the way. You've been talking, but you're muted. Oh, well, son of a gun. I heard something <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Hey, yeah, uh, Rye, I hope everything is okay. Um, that was kind of freaky. Um, I hope everything's yeah, that's weird. Right. So I I'm thought it was to... thunder, but it doesn't sound like that's it was just no, hopefully well, and that might have been somebody falling in the house. God forbid they're all okay. He has a family. Uh so yeah. what I'm gonna do for the poll right now, I'm texting myself. So I'm gonna put uh Tesla and Einstein yeah. and then put um time travelers. And then how about everybody else that's in the chat? We have uh, 65 of you left. If you would like to uh, throw two more examples out there uh, of what you would like. Yeah, I agree, everybody. Hope he's okay. Uh, yeah. Throw two more out there, guys, for the, for the Tuesday town hall session. Choices for the poll. I'm hoping that sound that I heard wasn't a portal opening and Charlie Chapman coming to kick Rai's ass. <laughs> it happens every time I bring it up. It was my fault. I should have known better. Or Helen Keller was coming to get you, JC. And she actually <laughs> that's, who, she's coming. that's who lives in your guest room. That's Yeah, she's, she comes through Diglocka with the Nazis, and which would fit her perfectly, actually. So. Um, 
In Numa 462, we actually did do Mandela Effect a few uh, shows ago. So Joe, we'll have Joe Breezy. to retouch those. In the, in yeah, the... Joe Breezy recommended the Inner Earth. Yeah, and I like in the that, Inner Earth. Though. Good job, Joseph, my ninja. Good job, brother. Agartha and... and uh... And inner, inner earth, earth. not I not like middle it. earth although we could do an episode could on do Lord it a of the Rings. whole week on middle earth i think that would be yeah. fun. i'm down man everybody is holding right it's everything what happened? happened did you guys hear that yes uh, something uh so we have like a door on the main floor in our gra i mean in our kitchen and we have like a big opening window that's on it. And I thought it slammed shut and broke. But what we do is like when we dry our dishes, sometimes we put our dishes on a chair by the window. So the air dries them really fast. And there was a big pot that the window came and hit the big pot and knocked it off and broke uh, the big pot. It's a metal pot, but it like it broke the metal pot. Uh, but oh boy. Other than yeah, I'm like, uh, yeah, well, someone left it. Okay, everybody was like, was it an explosion? Did somebody <laughs> drive a car into the front of your house? Well, uh, actually, it's funny you say that because we live on this terrible corner right here. Uh, there is about an accident once every four or five months here, um, and it's a because it's a it's a blind corner and. People will drive through this way without hitting this because there's a stop sign right here. They'll just drive through the stop sign and the people coming this way hit into them. And it, they don't hit into our house, but it's the house just across from us that gets all the action. That th th that house has been hit, I don't know how many times, by these vehicles hitting each other than hitting that house. Well, thank God it wasn't yours. Um, now that yeah. you're back, just to let you know, and I'm going to say yes to the last one because you know how nuts I go on Antarctica. Ooh, so Admiral Bird. Robert uh, Maronite, uh, mm -hmm. uh, ironic Maronite, Maronite uh, is one of the forms of Catholicism in Lebanese. I'm half Lebanese. I'm Maronite, right? Catholic. So uh, nice. Robert Maronite finished it off. Thank you. So for the. Whole... Yeah, the, 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 the cartels didn't get me, though. So I can see that uh, Blasphemist is asking. The cartels got me. No, I made it. Just to let everybody know now, uh, for the poll that I'm going to throw up tonight after the live stream, it will be uh, Nikola Tesla and Einstein for one, time travelers for another one, uh, my my ninja Joe Breezy through Agartha and Inner Earth, and mm. finally Antarctica and Admiral Bird will be the fourth one. Those, those are ones. those are great. Good. Those yeah, are very good. exciting. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm looking forward to that. So um, phenomenal. Is there any questions uh, that anybody has for any of us, for any of what we've talked about? Um, if you would like to hear any more uh, discussion on the, the pale crawlers, we kind of, you know, I mean, when you put great minds together, you know, you have other subjects that pop up. We oh, can yeah. go back to, you know, what we were talking about. You know, we started late today, uh, you know, so if you wanted to talk for, you know, 12 more minutes until 11, uh, we can. Um, if anybody wants to know, I, I see uh, Tyler threw something up here. I was on Indeed today and there's literally a job to do. Oh, sorry, brother. Well, let's see. I was on Indeed today and there's literally a job to do an HVAC in Antarctica. And it okay. said you might have to go to remote <laughs> research facilities. Huh? Okay. Well, I mean, they need heat, I guess, too. Let's go, so. DJ. DJ, uh, Tyler Take Radio. one for the team. I'll, I'll go with you. I'll <laughs> yeah. go with you. I'm actually a, uh, I'm a certified plumber gas fitter, so I'm not an HVAC installer, but I could, uh, you know, my previous life, I was a uh, journeyman plumber. Hey. They go hand in hand with HVAC. I'm yeah. seeing the thing. This is a trap. Don't do it. <laughs> I was just going to say, something's going on. They're going to get you to go down a deep hole, let's say. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, some beings like lizard people or or something else will grab you. If I'm armed, I'm Screw down it, I'm going. To go anywhere. So, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. And Susie, after we go back to the green room tonight, there is something I'm going to throw at Susie. You know, our little special something I've been putting together for uh, our secret 
uh, thing. I've already told you guys Secret. that I want you to come. I'm going to have to throw it at Susie and see if have, she would like I have to. absolutely no idea what you're talking about. You know you're what? Part of the secret. Do I want to get our group together to go somewhere? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I, I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be on. I can't really go there, but I'll be the online person. I'll, I'll run the the live from uh, from the safety of my oh, Mexican. You're like the you. correspondent. Exactly. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. We're, we're we're getting some uh, we're getting some video feed in right now, and oh my god, they're getting slaughtered. Sorry. I can only hope so. Uh, well, I hope it's you then, JC, because I've had enough. <laughs> they're going after it. They want the ball bad. They going after the ball bad. Well, I am the one that you know, with my situation physically, that I would be the one. This is guys. Go, I'll hold it off as long as I can. Just get out. You don't even have to tell. I, you don't even have to tell us, man. It over if it came down to it, so sorry. Oh yeah, you're going I down. Really love this, Susie. She's like, go take Matt. <laughs> you can't run anyway. You could use your uh, yeah, yeah. Okay then. I know how. It, at least I know where. I mean, hey, <laughs> truth. I'll truth. tell you right now. <laughs> don't trust Drew. Look at him. There's, hey, there's no backstabbing. It's it's straight up to your face. You know, it's kind of like yeah, we right told to your you. face. This is what's happening. Yeah. He's like, I want to live. You can't run, so I'll just kind of yeah. help you. Like, like I don't have run. to outrun the creature. I just have to outrun you guys. That's the key. Well, uh, we'll see if it can take me. Let's put it that way. Because I have a strong will. So throw, you throw do. A shoe at it. You so do. Far. Why why would you throw a shoe? Then you're down a shoe and then you'd be running and there's gonna be broken glass agree. and then you're gonna, it was, uh, yeah. It was a mo know. movie reference, sorry. Oh yes, yes. I know what movie you're speaking of. That's hilarious. Or or a George Bush reference. Oh, why would you do that, man? But a shoe. <laughs> Who throws one of my bloody favorite shoe? movies? That freaking hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I miss those movies. Those were awesome. So everybody, um, nobody has, and no, Yvonne, I, we will try our best not to become the missing. Uh, when no promise. I am finished putting this together, um, I know I'm being very vague for everybody. Um, I'm putting together a group of us that are going to, this summer, uh, go to a specific place. To do, a, and I don't want to say a documentary because a documentary is direct. I mean, that's a directorial type of event. Just mm -hmm. a, basically a big live stream where we have a group of us that I trust and want around us, and we're going somewhere very, very cool. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this is why I don't I will, know about it. I will let everybody know what the specifics are when we have it finalized. You will not be disappointed. And this is going to be one of the new formats that we're going to change up here and add to Planet 412. We're going to once in a while go to places, some places uh, throughout either the U.S. And I would we will also talk. We'd like to go visit Rye down in, in Mexico and, Mexico. and some places. So uh, we'll let you guys know when we get to that point. Um, so for, you know. For the rest of the show, we have a few minutes left here. Does anybody have any questions for anyone here? You know, Susie is not always here. She will be here more often. Uh, so if anybody has questions for her or any of us, um, I, I wanted to mention, I know I we've put it in the, in the uh, comment section tonight. We have a bunch of new emojis. So please check them out. There's some of them Andrew Christie has made himself. Uh, and Ooh. some of them are pretty, wow. they're all pretty awesome. There's a bunch in there, so check them out. Um, and since we're not getting any questions, um, I just guess we will start the normal uh, goodbyes. And I guess we will start uh, with Susie Bastille. If you'd like to let everybody know, Susie, where they can find you and what is coming up for you. So uh, the best place to find me is on Facebook, Susie Bastille. Paranormal Book Club, the Facebook group, is kind of the home base for 
the podcast, but there is a YouTube page or something up there yet, but there will be. Um, and puckwedgies.blogspot.com is my blog um, where I talk about all things Bridgewater Triangle and puckwedgies and little people related. Awesome. Little and people. I said Susie is going to be someone that you guys will be seeing more frequently. Uh, how about to our resident Sasquatchers? How about you, you Andrew, first? Uh, I want to remind everybody about Paranormal Game Show that will hopefully have a date here locked down very soon. Thanks to a lot of help by Susie, who has been great in helping to put that together. Uh, with new episodes every Monday of the show. We just put up one yesterday with Shane Grove. The next few weeks are pretty monumental. We have some huge guests over the next couple of weeks for you guys to keep your eyes out for and then jc obviously you have your folklore or out folklore fridays at 12 p.m eastern time i don't remember what episode number we're on right now but <laughs> seven it's like seven yeah that's it i think it is it's like seven or eight i don't know I think, I think this, I think this week it's it fridays at no no no, no 12 p.m during the day sorry oh, not at midnight man, during sorry. the day uh, yeah p.m i usually yeah. uh I, I usually actually PM. teaching uh, at that time because I'm always I'm like oh yes it's Friday. Well, you should, why don't you I've show never, it to your students? Well, I, I was hoping you would like start it two hours earlier and then I could watch it and then I'd be like, well, yeah, okay. you wanted it 10 a.m. Yeah, we can do 10, 10 a.m. Done. Bam. Swear. Okay. It's gonna be why, why don't Why don't we Why don't we settle? Why don't we go? Why don't we split the difference to 11 a.m. Um, and then I will be there and I will watch it because you do it live. You do the premiere, right? You do a premiere for it. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. And they're just a few minutes long. Like it's not going to yeah. take up your day there. I've, I haven't had one that's gone past four minutes yet. So mm -hmm. okay. just yeah. quick little, yeah. quick little fun ones. This one's a little bit more awesome. lighthearted okay. than the. Everything. Okay. There, JC. Charlie Chapman. Some, somebody just knocked on my window. Helen Keller. Are you serious? Pale crawler. It literally scared the shit out of me. My heart is just pounding <laughs> right now. And I, and I shit my pants. <laughs> I mean, I know you, you're you armed, so. Uh, in the okay, anyways. It's dangerous. <laughs> I don't, it's, I maybe something. I wonder, do they think they know that you're doing this live stream, somebody? And they well, it's them. so the thing is, it's the this window faces off to my backyard but there's no way there's no trees like i was thinking well maybe something fell against the house because mm -hmm. it is but there's nothing out that way that would fall on there and then i thought that maybe it was my dog really odd yeah um i would say arm yourself and <laughs> I, that's very weird uh, wow it was very. definitely it was definitely knocking it wasn't just like something clunked on the, that was that was you know that was you have woods behind your house there no i mean there's there's no there's another house it through my oh. backyard there's another backyard for another house you think maybe i mean do you have friends that would just show up and no you not or, not yeah. it's, doesn't it's, have friends. jc doesn't have friends yeah <laughs> i don't have first of all i don't have friends and second of all it's dark all and here. rain it's dark and raining and people people know rule number one is not to show up at my house unannounced because like not because i'm gonna do anything to you but because i hate when people show up unannounced uh, well, <laughs> most front yard sausage is a new cryptid that's now not yeah <laughs> and the, well they would they also wouldn't be in my backyard because i have a fence and stuff like they would have had to get over the fence and i would know because yeah. i have cameras really freaky yeah as i said arm yourself and uh check that out Moving on, Rye, uh, how about yourself, my friend? Uh, just the usual Thursday drop an episode. Um, you know, this live stream is on Tuesdays, of course, always. And and maybe I will be having a shorter episode that I will be dropping sometime, you know, maybe on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, because I'm going to be doing an interview on Thursday that's supposed to be a short one. And if it is, I will be dropping a bonus episode. But if it isn't, then it ends up going into the list. Um, this this last one that I did that was supposed to be a short one was pretty cool. Um, this this Thursday, I had interviewed a um, James Salcida, 
from Salcida Paranormal. He is actually a blind paranormal investigator, like legally blind. Mm -hmm. he, he can't partially see, but it's quite amazing what he can see in the paranormal side. You know, it's oh. so it, are we seeing with our eyes these ghosts? Or are we seeing something yeah. else with, okay, with something else? All right. <laughs> and well, I guess I'm up next. So uh, as I said, with uh, Planet 412, um, we have our uh, normal uh, format, which I started the channel out with. If you go and you look at, at my videos, the, the oldest ones, I think it's the first seven or eight. Uh, I consider that my traditional original format. I've gotten away from that. Uh, and it's not by choice. It's because, as you saw tonight, another example of computer issues. So I'm trying to get that dealt with. Um, I'm going to try and get back to doing that format. I've had hundreds of requests. So I'm going to get back to that. Um, the uh, Like I said, with the live streams, we're always going to be doing this one here. My other one, Saturday may not be a regular live stream. And, and I'm actually going to be trying out something uh, hopefully my computer can deal with what I want to do with this new format. And it's a really cool idea. And I hope it works out with, with what I have because it's pretty awesome. And it's something that after the first episode, I would definitely be having guests. And it would be extremely, even more laid back than this, just completely chill and just laughing and having a great time. So I will see if we'll be doing that this week. I'm hoping to. Uh, we'll have the narrations. We'll keep going um, with my interviews that normally are what my live streams are on Saturdays. I'm going to keep doing interviews, but I'm going to do pre-recorded as well as live streams. Live streams are not going to disappear, but I'm going to start doing pre-recorded again and sometimes release them with a, a live chat. So we'll see how that works out. And then uh, when I finally do get the new equipment I need, there is one other format that I need a new computer for to do. And I really, Rye knows this one. You and I have talked about mm -hmm. collaborating on that one. And that one is in in the, the can on the side. And it's already been open, but it's waiting to be done. And Rye can attest. It's a really cool idea. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, that I'll include other people because we'll need other people to do that format. So, uh, again, uh, please subscribe, like, and smash the notification bell for Sasquatch's Paranormal Podcast, uh, uh, the, the uh, Far Out Folklore on Fridays at 12 noon. Uh, also for Susie Bastille and the Paranormal Book Club uh, and uh, go to her Facebook. I had it up there, her uh, Facebook um, group. Let me get that back up there real quick. I got so many. Do that also with, with Rise Codega's Codex of Curiosities. Do that. Hit that, that like button and subscribe and notification bell and do the same for Planet 412. We really appreciate tonight that as many people that were in our group, this is the first time that we've gotten as many likes that have done it. Um, I, I wanted to save this for last. I'm not talking about it very much, but, um, you know, I am still, as I've mentioned, on and off because I had to today. We had that heart attack on a plate starting off. I need new equipment. If anybody wants to donate, there is a uh, Amazon uh, wish list that I have out there. You can go to Planet 412's uh, page, and I have it listed on there if you want to donate to help. Uh, I'm already going to be showing the new microphone after, you know, every month with YouTube, there's a time frame to when things come through to you. So I'll get the microphone out for you guys. There's also a present going to Andrew and his son uh, coming up in about a week or two. Uh, and then um, I get the new computer. Things will change. So thank you to everybody for supporting us. Like I said, I think we had almost 80 people here tonight. Uh, an excellent turnout. Thank you to Susie Bastille for coming. Uh, I had a blast having you here and you will be back. And Thank you to my all my brothers from another mother. See ya. Thank you.
Have a good have one. a good night, everybody, and uh, we will see you all soon. Squatch you later. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it greatly helps out the channel. I'll see you next time on Planet 412.